everyone, here is Azinius for today's episode with me, Vanessa. G20 Chair Indonesia's six standardized health travel requirements. Currently serve as a Chief Operating Officer for Digital Transformation Office. Indonesian Health Minister said, group of G20 major economies chair Indonesia has started talks with members on standardizing health protocols for travel, stressing the importance of harmonizing rules and technology as global travel resumes. Indonesia takes this People from all over the world will be able to travel with more efficiency. Indonesia's Health Minister Budi Gunadi Sadikin told a news conference at a G20 health meeting in Yogyakarta, where standardizing requirements is being discussed. Indonesian proposal, however, is that standardization must still adhere to COVID-19 policies of respective countries, including which vaccines, tests, or testing authorities they will recognize, he said. Budi also add, Indonesia had discussed harmonizing protocols also with the ASEAN and the European Union for travel between both regions. His remarks come as many countries relax restrictions to try to revive tourism and business travels, including Indonesia, which last week waived quarantine requirements after two years of tight border controls. Reopening of border for travelers delight at Malaysia. Malaysia reopened its first border fully on this month and allowing entry without quarantine for visitor vaccinated against COVID-19, much to delight of travelers. <laughs> Malaysia has since March 2020 maintained some of the tightest entry curbs in Asia to try to contain COVID outbreaks. Most of foreign nationals paired from entry and returning Malaysians are required to undergo quarantine. For two years, we have been unable to leave the country or go on holidays. But now, the vibe is very pleasing. We are very happy as this is what everyone has been missing. The reopening follows similar steps taken by neighbors Singapore, Thailand, Cambodia, Philippines, Vietnam and Indonesia with quarantine waived for vaccinated travelers with negative COVID tests before departure and after arrival. Biden discusses Ukraine in the Pacific with Singapore Prime Minister Lee. United States President Joe Biden discussed Russia's invasion of Ukraine and China's role in the Indo-Pacific with Prime Minister Li Xiangloong of Singapore at the White House. The two leaders sat down for talks in the Oval Office and were later to deliver remarks in what was described as a joint press statement. Biden told reporters as he opened the meeting that the United States supports implementing its Indo-Pacific strategy despite the current focus on Europe during the Russia-Ukraine conflict. In addition, Biden added more, even as we address the crisis in Europe, my administration is strongly supportive of moving rapidly to implement the Indo-Pacific strategy. Ahead of the meeting, a senior administration official told reporters that the United States was pleased with Singapore's decision to impose sanctions and export controls on Russia over its invasion of Ukraine last month. Russia calls its actions in Ukraine a special operation that it says are not designed to occupy territory but to destroy its southern neighbor's military capabilities and capture what it regards as dangerous nationalist. Therefore, Lee said, we will of course exchange views also on Ukraine and what that means for the Asia-Pacific region. Singapore's hope that the United States, amid all its preoccupations, will continue to deepen its relationship with countries in Asia-Pacific and China certainly, but also other countries besides China. Singapore is a key financial and trading center and has been keen to hear details of U.S. plans for an Indo-Pacific economic framework in a region Washington says remains a key priority despite the Ukraine crisis. The Biden administration announced an Indo-Pacific strategy in February in which it vowed to commit more diplomatic and security resources to the region to counter what it sees as China bid to create regional spheres of influence. Biden had been due to host leaders' meeting of the 10 ASEAN nations, of which Singapore is a member, this week. But the summit was postponed because not all leaders could attend on the march and announced by the White House. 
This trip comes after Vice President Kamala Harris, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, and U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo visited Singapore last year. Biden last spoke with Lee at a group of 20 G20 summit in Rome. Thank you very much. Sure that's our Philippines and U.S. troops conduct live fire exercises in annual joint military drills. United States and Philippines troops conducted live fire exercises during annual military drills between the two treaty allies. The annual Balikatan, or shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder exercises, involved 8,900 troops this year and included live fire exercises and training with amphibious assault vehicles, said Philippine Armed Forces Chief of Staff General Andres Centino. That is one of way of ensuring that we can operate jointly with our allies during a press briefing after the military exercises. That uh, we can uh, uh, operate uh, jointly with. In the past, President Rodrigo Duterte had scaled back some earlier war games with the United States to pursue warmer ties with China, but last year he withdrew a threat to scrap a two-decade-old pact governing the presence of U.S. troops in the Southeast Asian country. Live fire exercises returned in 2018 and 2019 after a pause in 2017, but the scale of the drills remained smaller and in 2020 they were cancelled due to the pandemic, while only 640 troops took part last year. Singapore gears up for reopening of borders to all vaccinated travellers. The excitement from Singapore's Changi Airport staff is palpable, said the country's Minister of Transport ahead reopening of borders to all fully vaccinated travellers. Singapore will reopen borders and lift quarantine requirements for all vaccinated travellers joining a string of countries in Asia, moving more firmly toward the living with the virus approach. Singapore Minister of Transport, S. Iswaran, said, I've met the retail chaps, I've met the ground staff, the airport staff, and it's clear the excitement and the optimism is palpable because I think they all want to see Changi Airport buzzing again. He added that the aviation industry is looking to recruit more workers after the workforce was reduced during the last two years of the COVID-19 pandemic. Singapore this week also dropped requirements to wear masks outdoors and allowed larger groups to gather. Ukraine will soon be able to better protect its skies. Ukraine's ambassador to Japan, Sergei Korsunsky, said Ukraine will soon be able to better protect its skies and cities from Russian attacks because it expects super modern military equipment from the United States and Britain. They still have superiority in air force, in airplanes and missiles, and we expect those days we begin to receive uh, super modern equipment from the United States and soon it will be from Britain. Uh, to protect our skies, uh, our cities against those, uh, this kind of attack. Korsunsky added that from the next week, Japan will begin to receive Ukrainian refugees who are now in Poland. And that's the health news for today. Thank you very much. Stay safe, stay healthy. Bye.